Hello, it's Joe the CRM chap here and we're back with a new video in my series all about Microsoft Exam PL600. This is the Solution Architect Exam for those who are building out or architecturing solutions involving the Power Platform. So in today's video we're going to be taking a look at Azure Synapse Link and how we can set it up within our Dataverse environment. Now, uh, if you've previously worked with the uh, Data, Lake X, Data Lake Export Service or Export to Data Lake functionality, this is effectively the same thing. Uh, it's been renamed with the additional option now uh, to also configure a link to Azure Synapse. And really what we're trying to do here is um, look to push out our data. Maybe we've got quite a lot of data within our Dataverse environment. We need to be able to get it out into a data warehousing solution of some shape or format or do some of a form of big data processing against that. Uh, using Azure Synapse Link, um, it gives us a route to be able to sort of uh, export that out, access it uh, using sort of familiar tools like SQL, uh, um, sort of uh, uh, SQL structured query link, structured query language, uh, syntax, and things like that. Also, as well, uh, if we have previously been using the uh, data export service with Dataverse, uh, then we may also want to take note because um, uh, at the moment that functionality is now deprecated. Uh, and so it may be that uh, we will need to understand and use Azure Synapse Link instead uh, to achieve the same sort of purposes. Uh, so to start working with this functionality, we first of all need to make sure we're in the Maker Portal and we can see under Dataverse we've got an option down here for Azure Synapse Link. And on here we can then start to configure the various different properties and configuration profile for the link. If we press on the new link button like so. And the first step we need to do is we need to provide some details of the Azure resources that we're going to connect to. Um, so let's um, at this point go over into Azure and look to create these out. Um, and I want to note in particular the values here for North Europe, which is where my environment is. Uh, this will become important when we actually provision the resources. If I now navigate across into Azure, I've got an existing resource group that I've got set up. Let's first of all proceed to create a data lake uh, storage account Gen 2 um, by hitting the create button at the top. So first of all, just need to create or select the option for a standard storage account to get this created. Hit on the create button like so. And we just want to go through the process of defining the various different settings for this. Um, so I just want to change my subscription to the one with my resource group. And I'll just give this a name. We'll just call this uh, PL600 uh, Synapse Link. Um, hopefully that will be a unique name, but let's find out. Uh, and then I want to make sure that uh, we have selected North Europe for this, uh, given that that's where our environment is going to be based. I'm just going to select the most cheapest storage option, which will be locally redundant storage in this case. Then I want to navigate through into the next sort of tab because there's a really important setting that I need to make sure I enable in order for our Data Lake Storage Gen 2 to be created successfully. So this setting here, enable hierarchical namespace. Uh, make sure that's ticked, otherwise we would need to go back in and potentially recreate the resource. Um, uh, there's no way to sort of enable it uh, after the fact. So with that done, I'm going to hit the create button. And then after a few moments, this will then get submitted and then created into the uh, into our resource group. So we'll return in a second once that's completed. With our storage account created, we just need to go into it and ensure that we've uh, added on an additional permission via the access control pane. So specifically, we need to ensure that we have been given the owner role over this particular storage account. So I'm just going to click on the add button, go to add role assignment at the top up here. I'm going to select the owner option up there, hit on the next button. I'm then going to search for and find my, excuse me, my current my current user account. I'm going to select it from the list like so. Review and assign that. And then with that done, after a few moments, we should be able to see that we're now the owner of this particular storage account. With our storage account created, we can then proceed to uh, create a Synapse workspace, and we do this by going into our resource group. Uh, and then hitting the create button again at the top we then type in synapse analytics and select the first option that appears on here or the azure synapse analytics option more specifically then we hit the create button then we can start to define the different settings for our particular sort of workspace um, so in this case what we need to do is give it a name so let's call this maybe po 600 uh, synapse link as our name we want to maybe change this to north europe as the location and then we want to bring in uh, an existing account, in this case, the PL600 Synapse link down there. And in this case, we want to create a new file system that we're going to be calling uh, user, uh, or users like so. Press OK. With the file system name defined, we can then click on the Review and Create button down here. 
This will then go off and then uh, we can then confirm the creation of this resource, hit the create button, and then we'll return in a few moments once this is finished deploying. Okay, with our Synapse uh, Analytics account created, we can now return back into the Maker Portal uh, and we can start the uh, filling out this particular form on here with all the details. So I want to make sure I've selected my subscription first of all, the resource group, which is PL600, and what it will do is automatically determine uh, which workspace and which storage account is in there um, and select the default one. If there's multiple ones, we can go in and just override that uh, if we want to. We hit the next button then, we can then start to add on the various different Dataverse tables that we want to include as part of the export. Now an important thing we need to remember with this is that only tables that have been enabled for change tracking will be supported here. So we may need to go out and just make sure that we've enabled that property first of all. Uh, for this example I'm just going to select the account and the contact table from the common data model. And then I'm going to hit the save button and it will start to go off and create this in the background. So after a few moments then we can see here's our new Synapse link um, a profile that's been created. We can click into it to view some further details. And what we can see on here that is that it's just a initiated the first initial sync of the data. So it's got a 13 contacts which is going to be pushing out into the Blob Storage account. And then from there it will then proceed to uh, 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 export out our account data as well. And we can refresh this at any particular point just to sort of see where the current progress is. Uh, the contact sync is already completed, so we can actually verify this by clicking on the button Go to Azure Data Lake. This will take us through into the particular container or into the storage browser where we can actually view and see and ensure that our data is syncing out. So we can see here's the uh, environment, so it creates a unique container per environment. We can click into there, we can see in the contact folder uh, a CSV file which will contain all of our different um, contacts that have been synced out from the system. And now this profile will continually export and push out data at, you know, on a sort of a regular basis. And we'll always have a replica of that stored out into Azure. We can also explore it in our Synapse Analytics workspace as well by opening this up into a separate tab. We can see that we've got a lake database set up over here and we've got a, a, a profile up here defined for our account and contact. Uh, so I can potentially just uh, expand this out just to view some details regarding the various different columns that are being stored as part of this. Uh, we can also see the various different metadata properties and details like that. And we can inspect and look to consume this a bit further uh, in our particular export solution. So as we can see, uh, there's a few steps involved when it comes to working with Synapse a link for the very first time. Uh, so we need to make sure that we follow through the steps very carefully to ensure we get no potential errors or issues. But once it's all set up, it gives us a very powerful and modern way to ensure that we are continually exporting data out from our Dataverse environment. We can then sort of use that data as a sort of a backup, perhaps. We can look to use that data as part of any sort of big data processing scenarios or to just simply get it out into a data warehouse so we can report on it further. Uh, there are a multitude of potential uses cases for Synapse Link. And in particular, if you are currently using the data export service within Dataverse, uh, then it will be a very good idea for you to start looking at this functionality and make some plans to start migrating away, uh, migrating into it uh, in the months ahead. So that wraps it up for this video. So I hope you found this uh, useful and interesting. Uh, uh, it's always useful. Uh, this particular functionality is very beneficial to consider from a solution architect point of view. Uh, so always keep it in the back of your mind. Uh, please uh, give the video a like and subscribe to the channel if you're enjoying the content and do check out the other videos in the series so far. We've been covering a variety of different topics, all of which are relevant to the exam. Um, so yeah, um, all these would say is have a great day and see you next time.